This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Make sure you go check out the affiliate link down below. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we got a couple different topics that we're going to talk about. What do we have to talk about? Well, the first thing that we want to talk about is actually a topic that was submitted by our $100 patron, Demon of Rosgrees, as part of his uh, You Pick the Perk perk. I love it. Let's do it. What are we talking about? He had a question for us, actually. What is something in CEDH or magic that took you longer to figure out than most other things because of previous knowledge you had about other formats or other card games? Okay. Okay. So I, I think there's a little bit of setup that that comes with this question. Yeah. So Because um, it, it's kind of a multi-parter here. So uh, this can refer to any lessons that we have learned from just CEDH from our push from you know playing modern and other formats into this okay or this could be because both of us have had a history with card games prior to coming in my whole life and we can card get, guy exactly right we love card games so is if there's other things from those other games that we played that you know maybe we had to get used to in magic understood yeah. I think I can answer this question at least a little bit what you got all right so for me I originally came from Pokemon cards Cards. I was playing Pokemon cards competitively, and from there, my friends went to Magic, so eventually I went to Magic. But one of the big difference from Pokemon, the TCG Pokemon game, and Magic is Pokemon, it all happens on your turn. There's no... You're not doing stuff on your opponent's turn. I do a turn, then you do a turn. There's no reaction. At least that's how it was when I played the game. Maybe something has changed now. I don't know. But when I played, that was the big thing is you do your turn, your opponent's is their turn. And for Magic, that was like a huge difference because to me, that was like, that made it so much more confusing because how do I know when am I allowed to do stuff? You know what I mean? Pokemon, it was easy. My turn, I can do stuff. Your turn, you can do stuff. That's normally how games happen. On chess, you don't get to respond to your chess, your opponent's movement pieces by I move something else instead. And even in card games, Games. Like uh, Hearthstone is, you know, you can only interact on your turn, and um, Yu-Gi-Oh is also kind of like that. Like unless there's there's specific like magic trap and trap cards. cards, but like yeah. your opponent has to do something specific. You've activated activate my trap them. card. Oh right? no, I guess that there there are. Tra- oh, we man. don't talk, know enough about modern Yu-Gi-Oh, so no, I don't think. I remember my my first and only lesson of Yu-Gi-Oh, and this was like a lesson of card games. It was a level up, is if you just use all the four drops that are eighteen hundred power or yes. higher, you were good to go. Easy, small, aggressive. And then that leads into magic. Yeah. Red deck wins. If you can just play the most highly efficient cards that you can that win the game very quickly, that's a decent strategy sometimes. So you would play Lodge in the Mystical Genie of the Lamp. I don't know if I can. can is that if you know that it was to be true? Oh, then I definitely play it. It's, yeah. it's right here. Oh, it's right on the screen. <laughs> yeah, right of course. Here, yeah. I don't remember the names of any of them. Some of them I think were like 1825 or 1850 or something. Well, like. And then they printed like a 19. And You're then like, that was Whoa. nuts. Yeah, I don't oh, know if yeah. any. I think some of this. Is based in like reality of strong things in Yu Gi Oh, but very quickly it was. Yu-Gi-Oh! I became actually something watched, that wasn't this. I actually watched uh, the first part of a documentary about the early format of Yu Gi Oh, and that was apparently the competitive thing to do really? was to get all of like the four star yeah. cre- creatures, monsters. I don't monsters even know. Monsters are pretty sure. See, that's one of the other things that I, I guess getting back to the topic. Hell yeah, we can do this great. <laughs> we can do this great, right? Um, the terms between like monsters and creatures was like certainly something that took me a while to get used to. And yeah. I had like friends that would make fun of me for saying <laughs> like, it's not a monster, Cameron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one is the terminology is definitely an interesting part, but I feel like that's the fun part for me, like learning the terms and stuff. Like that's one of the best parts about learning the a new card game. Um, but as far as that was like the biggest difference for me from another card game to magic, everything else, it kind of makes sense. The mana is a little bit different. It feels kind of upside down, but you can learn that that pretty quickly but the not being able to do anything on your opponents or rather coming to magic and finding out that you can do things on your opponent's yeah. turn that was like the biggest difference for me yeah and that's definitely a reason that kind of keeps it interesting too yeah, and definitely you want to kind of play more because that that really opens up so many other doors that a lot of games just don't really have access to yeah i feel like in magic every time you're actually doing something you're not actually doing it you're asking your opponents if you are allowed to do it and they have to say yes you are allowed to do it and yeah. then you get to do it so it's kind of a different dynamic than most games of just declaring this is what I am doing most of the time in Magic. You're actually just asking if you can do it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Were there any other things from like other card games that you know was a little bit tougher once you got into Magic? Then I don't know about other uh, card games, but I can certainly say from like other formats, like difficult things learning from like one v one playing modern a lot and to, yeah. like translating that into CDH. Knowledge. Yeah, 
knowledge. Yeah, that's that's kind of where more of mine are from because like most of my card gaming background is like I played things incredibly casually yeah. as a young kid and didn't really like find magic until high school. And that's really the card game that I have the longest relationship with. Um, and that I would really know the the most about. So again, like most of mine would just be like coming into CEDH, like like you were saying. There's yeah. a lot of stuff from sixty card formats that's completely different. What was the what's the biggest thing for you? So for me, it was threat assessment, and that's still something that you know I I'm always trying to make sure I'm I'm a little bit more tuned up on because uh, that's uh, it's a lot different when you just have one opponent and you're like you're the only person yes. that's trying to defeat me in this game. Right. And now there's two other players, and it's much more of a free for all scenario. So it's a lot more of a difficult battlefield to navigate and i especially found it frustrating when like playing jessica ishai i feel like this happens a lot like you take out the wrong player yeah and then you completely lose the game because someone else had the interaction or had like the win condition when they needed it um so it's it, you learn a lot of really hard lessons in game when Definitely. they come up yeah i think in 1v1 more often than not your thought process is like what do i what does my opponent not want to happen? Let me do that thing. Let me mess my opponent up in any way, or let me race my opponent, or let me defeat whatever my opponent's doing. I'm just focusing on them. Yeah. But in, like in CDH, there's two other people. So you have to assess which player do I have to interact with? And the answer is usually going to be none of them. I'm going to ignore them all, and I'm going to try to do <laughs> my own do thing my over own here. Thing. Right? Yeah. It just, yeah, it changes the whole dynamic because you can, like, lightning bolt, like, bur- bolting the bird, very popular in 1v1 strategies. And CDH is not so great because getting one of your cards to get rid of another opponent's card. Cards, you're actually both going down on cards compared to two opponents who are staying at the same amount of cards so you're like losing card advantage every time you kill one thing yeah which is why you have to save all of your interaction for just the win condition whereas in regular magic that's often not the case you don't want your opponent to present the win condition oftentimes it might be too late for that they may put him be putting the grape shot on the stack and you go i can't interact with this thing you know what i mean i should have i should have interacted with like the the tutor or the ritual like right. so long ago yeah, yeah exactly the other thing for me was learning con- Combos actually, because oh, sure. I played mostly modern and draft before I came into this, and so like I knew modern combos, but like I wasn't very familiar with like a lot of like the the vintage combos or yeah. uh, like even a lot of the stuff that was going on in Legacy too, like the the niche things going on in Legacy. I think that's like the biggest difference between like CDH and regular formats too is like the loop thing. Like the fact that you have a commander in the command zone, that's like, that's the biggest distinction between formats. Yeah. So the loops are just so much more common in CDH because the outlet's always there in regular magic, having a two card loop with a third card that you need three cards is like kind of a lot. There's much it can easier. Be really hard it's do, too hard yeah. to piece together. But in, in CDH and you have the outlet already there, you all, it's just a two card combo. It makes those loops much more different and, and interesting. I think. So and yeah, you have th- time. You have more time to get there, which is a weird mm, thing to say. Yeah. But like your fast man is what gives you that time. And like a lot of the okay, sure. I a see lot of saying. formats that yeah, aren't yeah. vintage don't have that kind of fast mana. Yeah, the, the mana crypt changes the whole the whole operation. Exactly right. So it's it's I don't know. It's it's a whole different thing. Yeah, it's, but it's I, a whole different. Bear. That's definitely yeah. That's that's the biggest difference. Yeah. Is there anything else that you you know had a little bit of? trouble learning before coming into cedh let me take a moment take a moment yeah take a moment and think like troubling things from other formats to cdh what was tricky what was something in cedh that took you longer to figure out than most other things no i think i just yeah. agree with your points how, now how do we transition from this into i think we just go next <laughs> what's next all right here's what's next i have to talk to you about something <laughs> i'm having a lot of trouble coming up with the next cdh deck that i want to build okay i know like the parameters that i want to go for because right now i have four i have four decks together and only one of them has black in it and only two of them have blue in it which is insane okay. Wow. They are all red decks in some kind of capacity. Right, I, can, I can help you with and this. And this is never a spot that I ever thought I would be at in my life. All right, what are your lists? First, read them off. So I have Armix Crown, so I'm in Grixis. Thrasios Bruise, so Sa- Sa- Sans Black. Yep. Um, I have Magda, which is mono red. Should we be marking off the colors for these, or do you have the amount of colors that you have represented in your decks? Um, I, I don't. We, we can mark these. Would you mind? Okay, so, so white, <laughs> blue, white, blue, black green red wooberg first the grixis deck first the grixis deck so that's uh one blue man i did this a stupid way <laughs> give me a piece one of paper. blue one black here we go i got this i got this. so you got no i did this blue, wrong okay black, yeah check this over red and you got blue red white green 
And you got red? Red, and then Rocco. And you got red, white. Green, yeah. You got four reds. I, I have to, four I, reds. I hate to break this to you, Cameron. I know. You have, you have, you I have four, reds. four reds. Your balance is way off. I, I'm all <laughs> over the place. I'm all over the place. But I've fallen back in love with Magda because okay, you, yeah. you, gotta do you get you gotta to do. play uh, Portal to Phyrexia in that deck. That's a great card. Yes, that one has been so much fun. And Clown Car is another card that, that you is get a to funny play one. now. That's a funny one that you oh, get to Oh, it's say. so good. Yeah. I love that one. So I would say you don't want red, white, or green. You have two of those. But you, oh yeah, you have two of the blue also. Your deck now definitely needs to be at least black. It definitely needs to be at least black. And I think it also needs to be blue. I would say so. I only have want two to, blue want decks. Good. I want, right, yeah, I want it to be good. To be good. Right. So now I'm in blue, black. So I know this would now be, I guess, another fast. Oracle deck, and I do have a Thassa's Oracle deck, but there's nothing wrong there's with that. There's a lot of Thassa's Oracle decks in the right? format. So I think I'm at a point where I, it could be a Demir deck, right. it could be a Bug deck, or it could be an Esper deck. You don't want to go four colors? I, I don't think I want to go four colors. You don't want to do Sans Red? Well, if, what would I do Sans Red? Like I, have I a, for one, am playing Thrasios Timna recently, just sleeved it up. Yeah, that feels really great. I know. I'm. I'm very excited to talk to you about that too, actually, too, because I know you, you've you've been waffling between a couple of decks recently i, I finally so. landed on one i think that you was finally good but, so but you don't want to be four colors well, let, well, I, let's talk about sans red because that is the exact colors that i i want to make sure that i'm in right. somewhere right what what made you decide to go with thrasios timna thrasios and timna i think is a little bit underrated right now the main thing i like about it is that it's a surprise to new opponents they don't know exactly what you're going after but also most importantly i think is recently i think blue farm has tried to be a lot more grindy a lot more Ristic Study, a lot more Mystical Murder. I mean, those True. things were always in it, but more Esper Sentinels, more focusing on Krom. I feel Playing like the deck, more answers to things, The too, deck has yeah. become like a mid-range deck. It's trying to outgrind its opponents, right? That's what Tim Necrom has become. And I kind of think that Thrasios was always the king of grind, but the format got too fast, so we all forgot about it. So if we're trying to grind... Maybe Thrasios is the place that I want to be. the place to be. So, I've really loved Thrasios Brews yeah. for that reason. It does very well against those kind of decks. 100%. So I'm thinking that if I just build basically a blue farm deck, and now this, I just copied somebody else's list and I put this member in it. You know what I mean? I didn't build it, right? But yeah. I, was, I was looking for a list that was basically blue farm. So I'm playing like Lavinia. I'm playing the little hate bear things that yeah. blue farm does. I'm doing the little on the ground value stuff that blue farm is doing but i have thrasios to hopefully draw me more cards in the late game than maybe a crom would i'm not sure crom you crom can draw an insane amount of cards for no additional mana added, no but, but a lot of people will, is crazy and a lot of people will play around crom after a certain point too so it does kind of almost act like a rule of law in play as well which can be a yeah. big stinker when, when the when the gameplay stalls out crom gets bad where the game stalls out thrasios gets good but what i i loved playing that thrasios timna when i was in my thrasios timna phase and i loved having two really cheap commanders that no matter what was going on like you had a good commander that was going to do something like there were some games where it, it was a timna game you looked at the board and like nope this is a timna game i'm gonna get a turn one or turn two timna down and i'm just gonna get card advantage that way and it's gonna go great and then there were other games you would be like nope i'm gonna get a turn one thrasios and a turn two activation and this is how i'm gonna win this game is through this kind of advantage i absolutely loved playing that deck yeah so. th and also i just one more comparison to the blue farm that i think is important to make instead of we're missing very powerful cards. Dockside and Underworld Breach are super powerful, but in place of those, I'm kind of thinking as Seedborn Muse as the replacement for Dockside. It's more initial investment, but theoretically, it can be a lot more bonus value after that. You can get a lot more mana from just, a Seedborn Muse. Just untapping once is almost equivalent to a Dockside. Right, exactly. And then instead of Underworld Breach, I'm kind of replacing that with, in my head, Kinnon, because Kinnon Basalt Monolith is a really good combo. And I love Kinnon, that combo. Kinnon kind of makes all of your other stuff in your deck really good. It makes all your mana decks rocks even better and Underworld Breach also serves as like a similar role, kind of. It, it helps you in the late game. It makes a lot of your cards that you've already used better because you get to reuse them. So that's kind of like this, this, the switch in my head that I make. Yeah, no, I, I definitely like that direction. But I, I am already playing a Thrasios deck. So for your n new deck, we don't really want to do I, that. I, that's part of the reason why I didn't want to go into like a, a four-color pile. So we want to do two colors. So we're doing blue, black, white, or blue, black, green? See, that's I, I think I'm leaning more towards blue, black, white and blue staying black, in white. the Esper colors. Yeah, I like white more 
than green recently. I've been liking white more than green recently too. And Esper's really caught my eye, especially because there's a lot of different options that you could have in that color combination, yep. which is in like a whole other conversation is what Esper deck do I want to build then so, too? Tivit's like the obvious first choice, I feel like. I'm... I'm already playing an Ian deck and I kind of mm. don't want to build. I'm sorry. I, I kind of don't want to build another Ian deck <laughs> yeah, for fair. that reason. Honestly, fair. And I also don't want a big six mana commander. Is six also mana is so I'm much. Because right? if they do get rid of it one time, that's an eight mana commander now. Yeah. You're never passing that. And I know it has ward, but it's still, still counterable. Right. It's still counterable. It's still beacon toxic. If they lose. They can still pay for the ward. If I'm going to Thrasios deck, I'm happy to pay three extra mana right? to get rid of your yeah. thing. Yeah, and fine. you're going to be in a lot of my pods, so I have to <laughs> consider that. All right. <laughs> what about Malcolm Timna? That's so desperate. that's kind of the one that I, I'm, I think I'm waffling between Malcolm Timna and Marnius right now. Actually. Not Zur, no Zur. I don't. I think Zur is off the table. Across Zur, I think all versions of Zur. Stupid anyway. Fucking yeah, get that deck. off. Yeah, no. Z- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zur yeah, is deck. fucking no. stupid. No, no, no deck potent. Yeah, that card's yeah. bad. <laughs> uh, okay, so Tim and Malcolm, or what's the the two two maker, the Marnius? That's not good. What Marty? I love assembling two card combos and putting it into my commander for infinite mana. I love doing that, that so much. Yeah, uh, I guess that's true. And then I, I don't have a Tim the deck right now too. So like Tim the Malcolm would definitely be a way I to go. I I'm have a name. Subscribe to you, Tim the Malcolm, or prescribe. How, what does a therapist do? He prescribes you. Yeah, you like you get prescribed medication. I'm gonna prescribe. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna prescribe you, Malcolm Timna. Malcolm Timna. Okay. What, what type of Malcolm Timna though? See, now I don't know this. Either. Come to another crossroads. Because uh, so I, I mean, I have a name for the deck. You have the name before you even have the deck. Yeah, Rumpelstiltskin. Why? Because Timna's a weaver, and Rumpelstiltskin turns sea would spin straw into gold. He does do that. Excess doesn't treasure. He? Yeah, uh-huh. you're very funny, Cam. Rumpelstiltskin. Can you spell that for me? R U M P L E. That was good. S T I L T S K I N. Wow, that's probably is probably right. It might be. It's it's <laughs> as it sounds right there. So we'll Better have to be. see. <laughs> Someone's in trouble. Okay, so Rumpelstiltskin, aka Malcolm Timna. Yeah. We, are we going ad nauseum fast, or are we going stacks and going slow? I don't know what. I, I feel like ad nause is good. I know this is a great card, but like I feel like a lot of the cards that like I would want to play in the deck are also pretty expensive. Like, what are you looking to play? I have a bit of a shell. I have a one. bit of a shell. Can you, yeah, can you it, pull it up for me. Yeah, it's missing fifteen cards right now. How are you always so under? I cause cause I I get the shell that I want to play, and then I'm like I don't want to be playing anything else. <laughs> like these are the cards He's that I want. To, yeah, 60, 75 cards. I can't believe I have to now find other cards to play. Yeah, I'm always under. Yeah. But then like I'm always like, oh my god, how did I forget that card? That's always what happens. So, to me. what are your advantages? Right off the bat, I can say this is a pretty good jewel lotus deck. That's is something I'm very excited for. Second thing I can say is I feel like you can mulligan a lot with this deck because your commanders are both mana and card advantage. So yeah. as long as your hand is including one of those things, your commander can supply the other one. Yeah. So I mean, I, I feel like I would be playing ad nauseum, but this is more of like an end step ad nause deck. So there's there's still no dock side. There's no dock side, but there's still like you can you know get into Thassa's Oracle and uh, demonic consultation off of like twenty cards or something like that. Yeah, so. I, I like you got Dranith Magistrate, Ranger Captain, Sarah Ascendant. I don't know how I feel about Sarah Ascendant, but that's fine. I understand. I it. don't know how I feel about it either, but I feel like this. I feel like I want it to be a Tim the deck. Yeah, because I don't have red and I can't play. Linthorn Buccaneer. I feel like I, I want to be able to focus more in on Timna and just have my other commander, my partner, be a really great partner that goes with Timna and what that one's. You gonna to play do. any of the pirates? There's a couple of pirates that are like close. Like Siren Storm Tamer? Yeah. That I no. And like the other one is the Spectral Sailor. That's Spectral the other Sailor. one. Uh, we just saw that with Kai right. actually in this past weekend's gameplay. No, nothing, not loving it. I don't love it. I think I agree. I think in a deck like that, I think you want to be playing good cards. If you're planning on so drawing too. three extra a turn, I think you want them to be live all the time. I, I understand that the the flyer will help you get extra treasure and it'll help you get extra cards, but I, I just I feel like you want better cards. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's where I want to be. I think I'd rather play like more interaction instead yeah. of that. I'm not saying that those cards are like bad for Kai's deck. Like 
Kai's commander, though, draws cards only in very specific fashions. Timna right. will go off of any creature that's hitting. If you play removal, you can get rid of the thing that would block the creature on the ground rather than needing the flying creature or something like that. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Which is kind of the reason why I do want to play Sarah Ascendant. Like, yeah. it's, it's the next best thing that I can get with Ranger Captain if I already have the Esper Sentinel. And again, I, I can't play Ragavan. I can't play DRC. Uh, I need to be able to grab something else okay. that's going to be really impactful is, and good. Is the plus five, plus five, and lifelink worth the trade-offs that you would get from it being a pirate that would work well with Malcolm? It's still a one-drop. You can find it with Ranger Captain. Yeah, that's is, true. Is the, if you're going to play Saracen, is I feel like, I don't know, That's what I'm. is, is it being able to yeah. attack the Ad Nauseam player a little bit? Is that better than you being able to get a treasure off of it because it's a pirate for Malcolm? It would also help my Ad Nauseams more too, and I'm That's a little true. bit nervous about what my, my curve is going to be because I prefer an Ad Nauseam deck that I can main phase and then win immediately. Like That's yeah. my play style. Is I don't have to worry about it. No matter what, if I cast Ad Nauseam, I'm winning on my my main phase if I need to. Yeah, how are you going heavy on rituals then? I'm... I, I got a couple rituals i mean i have dark calling the week and cabal ritual what about uh reign of filth i don't feel like i want reign of filth if you I want to be like able to I, win right on the spot i feel like you have i feel 15 like 15 cards i don't know with. if this deck wants to win right on the spot okay because i don't have dockside extortionist and i'm not like in one of the more explosive mana colors like i don't feel like that's going to be the better way to go. I feel like it would be better. You want to go slow. I, I feel like going a little bit slower. That makes sense. You want to take advantage to of your commanders. Exactly. Trying to win second and being able to like present interaction to stop other present people as well. Present a safe, protected win. Yeah, exactly. You want to be blue farm without the red. I kind of want to be blue farm without the red. And instead of red. dockside, you get a pseudo dockside in your yeah. command zone that's really slow and takes a bunch of turns. Yeah, exactly. Which is not a bad thing. And it's I, a good thing. I feel like the only reason why I'm doing this is because I have four red decks, and I feel like I I am kind of neutering this deck by not giving it red yeah. for what I really want to be doing. But, but we can't always just like hypothetical brew ourselves into a corner where we go back to saying, oh, well, just why don't we just play blue farm? Why because I, I, I don't think that's a great The last 15 mindset. cards in this deck should just be <laughs> red cards it is your red cards um but I, I i think there's other ways to do it i think there's other paths to explore um blue farm's good but i think this yeah um, this could also be very good so is this a good direction to go with malcolm timna like just trying to build a grindy do like a yeah a more mid-range kind of i think so nose? definitely others have done that i'm sure it's worked yeah. out okay oh, i'm not trying to like We're break not open and, yeah no. but for you for your play style you're asking i think you would love this yeah. could be like a jun deck uh, yeah basically right like maybe I, you play I a like dam maybe you play dam in there yo damn actually damn could be really good in here actually yeah. i do i do kind of like that idea yeah, yeah. maybe you just kind of mid-range you grind people out a little bit yeah. when you win when you have let's just your risk study and your timna has drawn you a bunch of cards you have a triple protected you yeah. know grand abolisher that's his oracle demonic constellation win or something yeah oh and this gives me another reason to get more fairy mastermind Ooh, going this yeah. is definitely a fairy mastermind deck a hundred percent yeah for sure and then you can kind of fall back on like your your a couple of your flyers being able to get in for enough damage to you know make it difficult for the ad nose players or even kill a player or two yeah exactly right yeah so i i i do kind of like where creatures are really at in the meta and i think that's also kind of what's influenced influenced me to go down this route i love it yeah great okay that sounds should great. should we figure out the last 15 cards of your deck or you're gonna do that later Let's totally figure out the last 15 cards of the deck. Real quick, before we get started, the Johannes Voss 2023 Playmat Collection Kickstarter is officially up and running. This project is going through May 18th, so if you want Playmats featuring some of the most beautiful art in all of MTG, make sure you check out the links in the description right below. How many lands you got first off? Uh, well, I have, t I have all the lands. I have all 29 lands, lands. I am playing an island because I didn't know what other land to put in. I think a basic is great. I'm also playing a planes now that I'm looking at this too. And maybe that is something here for the time being. So this is how I build semi semi podcast in here. How Cam builds mana bases for three color decks. Give it to me. So I usually will start with fetch lands that I can play the shocks, the duels that I can play. And then I've been a big fan of the, like the battle bond lands. So I'll, yeah, I'll put all three of those in there too. Um, all of the five color lands, then two, 
uh, whatever channel lands are good. Like if I can play Ottawara and Visayju, those will be auto includes for me now. Only those though. The other ones aren't auto includes. The for other me. ones aren't aren't auto includes. I, I do play the red one in Winota because it makes attackers that trigger Winota. I think sometimes it can be relevant if there's synergies, but yeah. they're not auto includes like these two. Do you want know funny in the in the best mom games? If my Ajango was a white black source instead of a jungle i would have had the black mana i needed to play Vasir seer and then i could have sacrificed my avacyn's pilgrim sacrificed the protean hawk and then won the game on my turn instead of that would have been better having to wait to go all around so there is a sacrifice it, it, to there is them. definitely a sacrifice so there's i like to think of them as spells more than actual lands I, I, yeah I, I don't really count them me I too count them as like an extra land yeah so that's what i'm playing silent clearing in this deck instead of the the seed of the empire i think I think I have. Do you want to take a look? Why don't you take a look sure, at the list? Yeah. I shouldn't be looking at the list. You take a look at the list and see I gotta re I gotta reorganize it. I can't look at it by color. Do it. Yeah. All let's, right. Let's, we got let, it. Let's take a peek. Creatures, creatures, creatures. So yeah. I have like all the best creatures. Dothy, in here. Voidwalker, Dranith Magistrate, Esper Sentinel, Grand Abolisher, Opposition Agent, Ranger Captain of Eos, Saracen, and Thassa's Oracle. Love them. Oh, all great. Oh, the 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 Halfling's not in here. Oh, yeah. Archivist of Agma. Archivist of Agma. Throw that little bitch in there. Yeah. Okay. What about um Notion Thief? No Notion Thief. So I would. I've been. I feel like I do want Notion Thief. The other uh, option I'm, is Grim Hireling. You get kind of one four drop. I feel like Grim Hireling yeah. is a great one in a Timna deck. Notion Thief, powerful card. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Notion Thief because okay. the last time I played an Esper Timna deck, I did not like having Grim Hireling as my value piece. Okay, it ended up not being what I wanted to do. You can only use it at sorcery speed, which I kept forgetting. I guess that's not that card's fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Notion Thief's Notion Thief helps you against Blue Farm too, which is kind of what you are trying to do. So it's good yeah. to have some ways to like beat the mirror almost. You know what I mean? Some ways for you to combat with like your same archetype. Yeah. So win condition wise, I really only have Thassa's Oracle and Mnemonic Betrayal. You're doing Doomsday? I'm not doing Doomsday. Thinking I, about it? I don't know if I like Doomsday. Tim I also have a Praetor's Grasp, and I'm thinking of playing Laboratory Maniac. I think Labman's a fine one, especially because Timna can make you draw the card. Right? Timna can make you draw the card. So I think Laboratory Maniac is going to be my other win condition. I think that's great. Um, no Doomsday. You don't want it too risky? You're a coward. Laboratory. Great. Um, Do you know how hard it is for me to find cards on Moxfield sometimes? Because you're dyslexic. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> dyslexic, but I might be. No Doomsday. Should I be playing Doomsday? I don't know. It's a one card win con. Timna can crack the pile. Timna cracks the pile right away. I have to play bad cards. Like part of the part of the reason why I wanted to this be to be like Blue Farm is that I don't have to play bad cards in the deck. Well, let's and talk like, about what type of bad pile? cards you have to play. You can play five cards. You draw the one. Yeah. If you have both of your commanders out, here's what you do. You have both of your commanders out. They both draw you a card. The the there's the next one is a Gataxian probe. Uh, and then one of those three that you drew was Thassa's Oracle, and then you have two cards left, and you still win the game. Okay. There's one with no dead cards. I, I'd like to have one where I only need to get in with one creature. In that case, we need a bad card. I have now. to <laughs> play like I have to play like deep analysis. No, I think you can play. Well, that one you can't pay no mana for to draw. You have to pay two mana for to flash. Can I play Thought Scour? No. Well, that one you have to pay a mana for. I think if you pay, what's the five mana creature that you can cycle to pay two life? Oh, Street Wraith. Street Wraith. You can play Street Wraith or Gush, either one of those. Gush, you have to have two islands. That's hard. Uh, Street, Wraith, Street Wraith is just you just need to have pay the two, two life. life. Uh, you can and draw as it. long as you... So you crack the pile Doomsday and then you get your life. So Street as long Wraith. as your life total was more than four... That's true. Yeah, you might don't kill yourself. I have to watch and out for that. Your Thassa's Oracle will still fall to uh, destruction. If they kill the Thassa's Oracle on the stack, you'll still have two cards in your library, and you will not win the game because that is more than your devotion to no, blue. No, but that is that is the downside about the the Doomsday pile is that if you don't win the game, then you just or lose you the play game. Gush and you know, end Street Wraith and ways to draw all of them so that it's not an issue. But then you have to play I another have to play five Gush mana spell. And you're adding that's deck. two five mana Gush spells. Gush is incredibly powerful, but sometimes yeah. it's not. Like I'm not playing Peer into this deck, but like I also really don't want to flip. You know, gush into my ad nauseum either. Yeah, like that seems like it's worst case scenario. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think Doomsday is is an option. I I think you could play Doomsday here. 
All right, I'll put it in. I think he should put yes. But all right, I'll put it in. Oh, now I have to play Doomsday. But so now, now I have to play. Do you want to play Street Wraith? I'd, I think I'd rather play Street Wraith than Gush, right? All right, play Street Wraith. Because I'm playing like the Battle Bond Lands and that cycle, I'm finding that there are more times that I don't always have islands in play. And especially if there are people that are playing Carpet of Flowers, I also, if I'm not trying to you know, feed them, I want to make sure that I don't have two islands. Also, Street Wraith has Swamp Walk, I'm pretty sure. Street Wraith does have Swamp Rock. Evasion so for Tinder. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's the five mana spell I want to be go. casting in this deck. That's you gotta do that what least, it is. That's what you got to do at least one time. Five mana cast Street Wraith. Right. Oh, man. That'll be a great game. I can't wait for that. How many more slots we got? I have 90 cards in this deck. So you got 10 more counter spells to cram in there. I have 10 more counter spells. So this is, these are the counter spells I have. I have an offer you can't refuse, Fierce Guardianship, Dispel, Flusterstorm, Forces to Get. Is this helping? No, just want to take a look at just look at it, yeah. You have all the kinds of what are you missing? That's what I'm saying. That's why I like have trouble filling out the rest of the deck. Like, this is everything that you want. Does Esper just not have enough good cards? Is that what's going on? Uh, that could be what's going on. What about no? You have removal, you have your win conditions. Like, are there any other good Timna cards? What about um, Lavinia? Lavinia is really good. Try Lavinia. Lavinia is pretty much one sided, right? Yeah, yeah Lavinia is kind of one sided. Yeah. Um, maybe Cavern of Souls? You got a Cavern in there? I don't have a Cavern of Souls. Maybe Cavern of Souls? What do I want Cavern of Souls for? Human on Grand Abolisher. Or, uh, um, uh... On Thassa's Oracle. Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> That's not the one I'm worried about getting countered. Yeah, but you could, on Grand Abolisher, a human is good. It also casts your Timna. good. What land do I want to cut? Probably None. basic... Just have a 29th land. That is, that would be my 30th land. Great. Your Timna deck. You want to hit your land drops every single turn. 30 is fine. Especially if one of them's Cavern Souls. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i think that's fair i haven't i haven't played a lot of cavern of souls in cedh i think it's good uh but in the decks that i've like proxied and like neck decked and played it actually has been really good so yeah okay what about oh you know i do play it in rocco and i've really liked it nice. in rocco yeah actually, rocco makes so, kind of sense so i th i think this i think that makes sense here too oh i'm also playing lab man in this deck so that also makes sense okay um you're playing dismember I am not playing Dismember. What is... Because I'm playing in blue. So I have a bunch of Bounce instead, and I have Swords to Plowshare, so I don't need Dismember. I much prefer Swords to Plowshare to Dismember. Why not play both? I can, right? I need cards. You need, you need ways to get rid of stuff. That You need ways to... You, you're grinding, right? You need spells to cast to get rid of your opponent's you shit. You do need spells to cast, yeah. Um, I'm not playing Ponder and Preordain yet. Yeah, and I, I still feel that cards. they're not good. What about Dam? Dam. We did talk about Dam, and I should be putting Dam in. Um, are there any other creatures? Is like Ledger? Oh, I don't have Fairy Mastermind in here yet. Get that one in there. Is this a Ledger Shredder deck? Mm, no. Oh, is it a Yawgmoth spell deck? Is it a Yawgmoth spell deck? I don't really have a lot of ways to recur things. I could be a Rest in Peace deck instead. Mm. I'm not in red, so like I'm not playing... There's an idea. What if you play Leyline of the Void? Get that shit in there, turn zero. No. <laughs> No, I, I think it's good. I think I, I I like where your head is at, but I think I'd rather play Rest in Peace instead because I'm already playing Dothy. Dothy, so I don't think I want three of that effect. I think having one is enough, and I think I do want to consider keeping my curve lower for— What about your Mnemonic Betrayal? I do have Mnemonic Betrayal. Oh, because it does. That's right. I'm going to remove Rest in Peace. Gone. Get Gone. out of here. Get out of here. I have 95 cards in this deck. You got Windfall in there. I don't have Windfall in well, here. Well, you got Notion Thief and Mnemonic we put, Betrayal. We got yeah. to get some cards. Is in Windfall favorite. better than Time Twister? Ooh, so I have because actually Because now been, I'm not playing Rest in Peace. Yes. I think you can play Time Twister. You I've been time cutting Twister? Time Twister because I don't want it in my Underworld Breach decks. But uh, I think here it's fine, especially since you're playing yeah. Ocean Thief. So if I am playing a wheel in a deck, and it's if it's red, I am playing Wheel of Fortune. But if I don't have red in it, I do tend to like Time Twister better than Windfall. Even though Windfall can potentially draw you more cards, I think a lot of those times you are like already like way losing the game and it draws everybody all of those cards yeah unless you have notion thief out you're saying the time twister is better 
Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. I think that the Time Twister is the better way to go, too. I think you can play both of those cards. You think I should play both of them? Why are we on a one or the other situation? I don't know why I'm trying to go with a one or the other Because I don't like them, is why. That's I don't fair. like yeah. them in general, which is part of the reason a, why I was hesitant no, about even including like a wheel package. If but, you're accruing value with Timna, you don't really want to wield it away. So I do kind of understand that. I, I think it's, it's fine to just play one. And I think, yeah, that, that makes sense. Your argument makes sense. Yeah. I think you can play one. Just yeah, I think I can play one. Okay. Play I'm going to take Windfall out. I think if you can that's take Windfall case, out. Yeah. yeah. Let's remove Windfall. And now I'm at 96 cards. What about other ways of like dating instant of value? We're not playing Smothering Tithe. No uh, smothering I'm tithe. not playing Smothering Tithe. Um, if I played Smothering Tithe, I would put Windfall back in. Yep. Because then that okay. just solidifies me to be more of a wheel deck. But I don't think, I don't think that's great. Yeah, I agree. Is there another artifact? Maybe I should play it. I am playing Mox Opal, and I have 16 artifacts, including Esper Sentinel. Can you get away with Graph Digger's Cage? Um, can I get away with... So it doesn't work with Mnemonic Betrayal, but in the times that I'm ad nauseuming and going into Mnemonic Betrayal, I can Are you probably sure? bounce the cage. Then. Are you sure you want to play Mnemonic Betrayal? Because we're on Time Twister, which also screws up Mnemonic Betrayal. Maybe now that I have wheel packages as a potential win condition, I don't need to play Mnemonic Betrayal. Maybe you cut the Mnemonic Betrayal and you put back in Rest in Peace and uh, Graph Digger's Cage. Here comes Rest in Peace and then Graph Digger's Cage is also really good. So this yeah. way you're really stopping a lot of the main decks while still just remaining on like a good that historical strategy. And I, I do like this. Is it? And I, I think that the one-sided stacks, having like a bunch of the one-sided stacks is the is a great way to go with this then too. Yeah. Um, what's your what's your CMC? Uh, my CMC average right now is 1.19 with lands and 1.74 without. Yeah, that's okay. It's actually really good. And under 1.2, I think, is, like, doable. Like, that's... I mean, higher than that is definitely yeah. doable. 1.2 <laughs> is, like, my sweet spot, I feel Yo, like. Yo, and without ad nauseum, I'm at 1.15. Oh, yeah, you're great. Yeah, so yeah, I still need... Because I'm not playing peer, which I think is a big part of that, too. Yep, yeah. I think it's better to play. You don't need peer. I don't, I don't like, think I'm, I need peer either. I have been either. not liking peer recently. I uh, See, I still really love peer, but there's... But that's because I play decks where I can win immediately with Peer, and I, like I'm I'm set up. I set myself up to be better with Peer. A little bit more of an end step ad nauseum deck. This one is. I think th I think so too. Yeah, I think so too. How many cards are we at now? I'm at 97 cards. Three more. I, I know, right? We've been, we've cut a couple of them, and that's what's that's what's. Is there another there, win then. line we can throw in there? Or um, another? Do you want to put Jace? Wielder of Mysteries? Is that what his name is? I don't... I, I could, yeah. Why not? Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. What about Divining Witch? Really go all in on this. this it, it's a consultation deck, It's a consultation right? deck playing, through and through. We're playing, we're playing a bunch of different ways. We're, we're drawing so many cards. We're planning on just finding these pieces, so we want more versions of each of them to find them. Exactly. Um, and then for for bounce spells, well, so I have Psych Rift, and I have Chain of Vapor for yeah, bounce more. spells. Yeah, one more bounce spell. I do get one more bounce spell. You're not and a side deck, so that's not sure. matter. It doesn't matter. No, so it does not. You're not. So you're not playing uh, Alchemist Refuge since you're not a dock side deck. You're not playing Snap because you're not a guy's cradle deck. You're not playing Unsubstantiate. Man, maybe you're playing Unsubstantiate. Are you playing Boomerang? Bounce their lands? I'm not playing Boomerang. I'm now thinking, is it Malevolent Hermit and Malevolent Ooh. Geist? Maybe. I don't know. No, I'm going to move past that I didn't because love that I'm card. Cause I am in white. If I wasn't in white, I would consider that more. But because I have Silence and Grand Abolisher and Ranger Captain, I don't think I need to worry about that. I do think another creature interactive spell is the way to go. And I'm starting to think maybe I do want... Dis I put dismember in. Yes, but I do think another like creature interactive spell is the way to go. I don't play delay. I'm also not playing manage rain. I would go with delay. You're not doing anything with manage rain in this deck. I don't think. I mean, I guess you could cast Adnazium with it, or I could like recast Timna if I need. I love manage rain. If you love manage rain, do manage rain. That right, double blue is Mana trickier, Drain but you're in three gonna, colors. It's fine. I'm going to do Mana Drain for me, and if 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 I, I'm playing Jace Wielder of Mysteries, yeah. So I'm probably already in. You know, you're what? blue heavy. You know what I should do? What I should I I should take another look at this mana base and maybe don't do high tide. <laughs> no, I don't want to do high tide. But I'm thinking I want to change Silent Clearing into another blue white. 
That's probably fair. Yeah, An, or look a blue at the black land. Look maybe. at the colors in the bottom and see what percentages you are of each. You're probably mostly blue. Thirty six percent blue and twenty nine percent black. I think I want another blue black land instead of this silent clearing here. I could do a blue black pain land, but I don't love that idea. I could do a pathway. That sucks because I already have morphic pool. I could do. I could do dark slick shores. Yeah, you can do dark slick shores. I, I have I, I have thirty lands, but I feel like I feel like. So you're going up to thirty one. No, this will be my thirtieth land. land. Okay, yeah, yeah great. So then I you feel have like I, I feel like I tend to like dark slick shores and the fast lands in like twenty eight, twenty nine land decks, but. I still feel like most of the time it's going to be one of my first three lands. Yeah, so I think it's fine. I can definitely see that. Okay, we got a hundred cards here. Cool, we have a deck. I'm excited for you. Well, I appreciate you helping me finishing uh, to put now, this together. Now, when are we going to see this on the channel? Soon, hopefully. Soon, hopefully. Well, I'll tell you what. Actually, um, the next game that we're recording. Uh, after we record this podcast is with Matt Sperling. You should play this. And you I'm pretty to. sure that in our schedule we have it set up so that Matt, the Matt Sperling game is actually pr coming out pretty quickly. Great. Which means that it's the Sunday video after this podcast comes out. Wow, that's perfect timing. So I think there's a chance that... Did we do something? I think there's a chance that we did something here. <laughs> Hopefully we didn't We accidentally it. fell into a theme. We're going to get each game. We're not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, right? I want to get stacks down and not be able to do yeah. anything. And like nah, I someone think else's Dreaded Magistrate is going to hit play. <laughs> and then like my Tim is fucked. I, I think we got a good deck. I think this is something. I think this is something too. I like I like this direction. I think, I think Doomsday is going to grow on me. As well, once once I've never won the game with Doomsday, not yet. So I think once I get you a, haven't played enough Doomsday, that's probably true. So I think once I get a Doomsday, and I just remember that my Doomsday pile is uh, you crack it with Timna, uh -huh. and then you cast Get Probe for yep. two life, and then you cycle the Street Wraith for two life, and then you. Uh, cast Thassa's Oracle, and then that works. Great. You need the triple black from Doomsday and two blue from the just you have to have it. You know, yes. for your Thassa's Oracle. Correct. Um, there's like other things that you could put, like a Lion's Eye Diamond or a Lotus Petal in the cards that you draw or something. To you're not playing Lion's Eye Diamond, maybe you're playing Lotus Petal. I am playing Lotus Petal and no LED. So that yeah. can be in their pile so that you only need one blue before, and then the Lotus Petal is one of the blue. You know what I mean? I would have to play like gush instead of street wraith if that's the case then because well, i can only draw one card at a time you've tim to draw oh your tim draws getaxian probe yeah taxi probe is street wraith draws, street wraith draw is 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 lotus but then you need the th but then i need something you, else to draw the fast circle i understand i understand yeah so that's yeah, yeah. kind of okay, why so that's a yeah. little trickier okay yeah you're right well either Plus, way the Malcolm, if Malcolm's a thing there that attacks, go. it's what creates the extra mana Easy. to help me cast. This that is probably after all too. fleshed out on like some Malcolm Timna primer somewhere else. Someone's screaming about. If yeah, so, but this I way apologize. you can. But this is coming from our brain, right? Isn't it? <laughs> you can't this see your is own this is like a reaction video now yeah. because we're just figuring things out now. There you go. Oh, holy shit! Look yeah, at these Malcolm synergies. can help you pay for the cards that you yeah. have on Doomsday. What's Great. that? We're not prepared when we come to the podcast. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? This is the podcast. This is the podcast. Cool. Is this a podcast? I don't fucking know. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Demon of Rosgrees and Baby G Bus. Thank you so much, Demon of Rosgrees, for submitting that topic today. I thought that was a good one. Also, don't forget, huge shout out, enormous shout out to Dragon Shield, our sponsor of the show. If you'd like to pick up any Dragon Shield product, you can do that at the affiliate link down below. Make sure you check out PlaytoWinMTG.com for all of the Play to Win merch. The tie-dye shirts are back in stock on Bonfire, so go pick them up while the campaign's going now. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys on Sunday. Or listening. Thank you for watching or listening. $50 patrons. Let's shout them out. AJ Albusabi, Jake Tofield, Dashes, Mitchell Shepard, Justin, Man Solo, Nikola Marikovic, Steven Shalikti, Big TP15, Blackwingoli, Blaine Danger Action, Isaiah Broliski, Pedro, Metal Boys Games, Kuaja Ahmed, Jacob Depp, Michael Blue, I'm his Fino. Lauren Connell. Joe Mag. Great. I like as they become less and less names as yeah, it progressively goes on.